So uh, congratulations, congratulations again to one fish, two fish, random fish, blue fish. I think. We And now let's turn to a description of the hunt overall from top to bottom. Uh, starting with the overall design philosophy of the hunt from our esteemed director and master of all puzzles, Aaron Rohde. So this is the part where Aaron told me I was going to talk about this, but I have no bullet points so I'm just winging it. Um, one of the things we really, really wanted to do this year was make the hunt fun for small teams. Woo! So we built that entire 24 puzzle MIT round where all of the puzzles were meant to be a little more straightforward. We had some pretty strict test solving rules that if our test solvers couldn't do it in under two hours, we had to make the puzzle easier. Um, and then we wanted it to end with its own runaround where we realized we were going to have way too many teams running at the same time. <laughs> so we made the QR code run around so you could do it self-guided, but you could still sort of get the experience of, look, you've pieced all these things together, you've solved three meta puzzles, and now we're sending you in a run around. And at the end, you know, we wanted to give you something that was like a coin, even if you didn't get the coin, and we'll talk in more detail about the cards, but that was sort of the point of giving you the physical deck of cards. Um, I think over half of the teams that were still active by the end actually wound up finishing that part and getting a deck of cards. Yeah. If you're here, we can get you a deck of cards. Um, other design philosophies that we had, we wanted to incorporate MIT in things. Um, we wanted to run around that had puzzles. We really liked physical puzzles, so, you know, yeah. nothing made me happier in this entire writing process than when we needed a third thing for the runaround, and Mark Feldmeyer said to me, is he even here, or is he still sleeping? Yeah, yeah. Mark Feldmeyer said to me, I will do something. I had no idea what he was going to do. I didn't care. I just knew Mark Feldmeyer was on it, and he built his bed. That was really good. The other thing we did is we, the way the rounds opened themselves was kind of, you could get a lot of rounds at once, but we made the way you get puzzles, and maybe this was a bad decision, so it was harder because we had balance the pants, we floodgated on rounds, we had to sort of tighten the puzzle release on puzzles so that we didn't floodgate with you too many. I don't know how well that worked out, but with different rounds, different characters, and more people got to sort of get the flavor of the whole hunt faster, even if they didn't get to all of the puzzles. At the same rate, I don't know. We have other design philosophies. <laughs> Terminate this slide because I don't know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> so I'm trying to kick off. Everybody was at the Monkey Boy kickoff. So, yeah, uh, we had this whole dummy theme about some conference on stuff. That didn't make any sense, but had objectivism in it. But, uh, <laughs> Hey, TLDR of this is John Gold hates puzzles, what a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but we love puzzles, and then the Wonderland is leaking into MIT, and you have to go find the Cheshire's cats, Cheshire cats' friends, to get them to tell you what's going on. And so then you solve puzzles. And so now the overall structure back here. Okay, so, like I was saying, we have this MIT round, and in the MIT round, Every puzzle had a card. Um, there were only three suits. I don't really know what happened to the hearts either. Um, <laughs> I think at one point we were like, well, the queen of hearts might be a character, so it'd be weird if she was a puzzle, so let's just not use that suit. Um, so each, each suit, I know what that is doing. Each suit was its own mini meta puzzle, but it wasn't, they were all mixed in, so it wasn't really around, uh, but they were meant to be more straightforward and easy, like I was saying. Um, and then every round after that was a Wonderland character or characters. Um, there were, in MIT, you had the Dormouse, the Caterpillar, and Tweedledee and Tweedledum, who were the three people you were going to be here. And then those all connected to a Wonderland hole where the beast, which if you didn't get that far, you found out was actually Alice because, I don't know. <laughs> Terrence, I guess the Jabberwock's name is Terrence. 
Mr. Terrence. There's somebody else that's, there's another smaller that's Terrence, and that's Mr. Terrence. Yeah? Um, Mr. Terrence is not the beast, it was Alice. So the first three Wonderland rounds were all areas where Alice had been and had ruined things, and you had to fix the thing, and then you got an object. This is our time to like objects. Um, and then after that, you went into Wonderland Center rounds, which by the way, we kept calling the Wonderland Hole rounds Wonder Hole rounds, which was just. <laughs> 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 um, Don't <Google> that. <laughs> Should have been a card in his Wonderland card. Uh, so the Wonderland center rounds were areas where Alice had some sort of weakness so that she couldn't destroy the round. And so then the final one round was to combine the objects you got from the one round with the weaknesses in the other to eventually lead you to this logic maze thing where you used objects that, uh, well, you actually the run around got you different objects that you traded in. Okay, we're gonna get that. I missed that much. <laughs> okay, so the MIT rounds, all of the cards were laid out in a map of you Actually, I went into Codex's headquarters and they had drawn the map twice because they realized it wasn't nearly as asymmetric as they thought originally or something. And they had it nicely in triangles like this. Um, so I designed it like this and then we said we had to put it on the MIT map and I said, oh, that doesn't look anything <laughs> like how I. But okay. Um, so they were all laid out like this. We sort of tried to stack so that you got spades, which we thought was the easiest um, of the metas, which was the one with, well, we'll get to what they are, but we got spades first and then more clubs and then more diamonds in the center. Um, we were guessing which ones you would sell first, but I think we guessed wrong. I think more people guessed. We got Dormouse first, but I think more people guessed Tweedles first over Caterpillar. Um, but so there were three metas, and then if, when you unlock the meta, you unlock the next one. But this was a graphical structure, which... It's been a while since there's been a hunt with a graphical puzzle structure. We wound up having fun, but this is where we got to use solve the puzzle, unlock the connected ones, and... So when we release, we release from the inside. So this is the Dormouse meta. All of the... Answers in the Dormouse rounds were um, collective nouns for various animals. So it's a mischief of mice, a shrewdness of age. Shrewdness is spelled wrong on that side. A watch of night. Nice <laughs> an intrusion of cockroaches, an array of hedgehogs, a memory of elephants, a troubling goldfish, and a wobble of ostriches. Which interestingly, people kept asking me at various times, somebody keeps calling it, like all these teams are calling it Parliament for Feature Head. Why are they calling it Parliament? That you don't get that out of that puzzle at all. And I was like, because they're back solving and it's Parliament of Owls, which we originally had as that word, but we had to throw it out because it's also a Parliament of Brooks and it wouldn't make it clear. So, for all of you who back solved Parliament and were wondering why it wasn't Parliament, it's because of Parliament of Brooks. Um. Oh, back up quick. Anyway, you solve it by reading the first letter of the animals, and it's Manchego, and Manchego is a cheese, and so that attracts the Dormouse. And then there's a Dormouse interaction, you go to the Dormouse, and you see this <laughs> rabbit hole. Uh, the Caterpillar meta, I should say that the last uh, meta was written by Hannah Star Robinett, who's not here, she lives in San Francisco, and couldn't make it up tonight. Uh, the Caterpillar meta, I wrote... These all overlapped by trigrams, and then it was really evil, and the release structure, you probably didn't notice the overlapping until you had about five answers, because I made sure that they were released such that you had every other word. Um, <laughs> which might be why it got solved slower than people. Uh, so you take the overlapping trigrams, and you read the middle letter, and that spells tobacco, which is obviously the bait for the caterpillar. We realized at some point during the hunt, Owen said to me, we picked the wrong bait, it should have been hashtag. Oh. Yeah, we did it, it was tobacco. <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically the caterpillar. But the caterpillar was the only one where you didn't actually use information from the cards. So the card numbers were just random in this one. Um, and then the next one was Dan. Hi. Um, so the, uh, as you saw, the, the Dormouse one involved animals, because the Dormouse is an animal, and the Caterpillar had things linked together, the Caterpillar's linked together. So for the Tweedles, we thought there should be two 
sort of twosomes. So there's across and down things and there's diagonal things. Basically, you just had eight seven letter words. Uh, there were, originally, that's all we gave, essentially. Um, and we decided in test solving, particularly because it was an MIT meta, we needed to clue the across versus down. So four of the uh, answers, two, three, four, and five, had across in the puzzle title. And what were the other numbers? Oh, oh you, did, you didn't see that? <laughs> Across the hall, find your way across. Um, and then uh, the downs, I forget which numbers they were, but they were 8, 9, 10, Jack, dressing down. Uh, down to the rabbit hole, upstairs, downstairs. Um, you'll notice the uh, one of the across answers has down in it. Oops. <laughs> so you had two directions for words, and you read two diagonals, and you got twin pops for the two Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Very, very quickly, uh, there was an alternate meta that we didn't use that was very similar to this, but in a flower shape for a Wonderland meta. It was going to be the Flower Garden that had um, 18 answers, many of which were 11 letters long. Um, uh, I believe Aaron eventually did the grid for that and did it by hand. Uh, this grid I did with crossword compiler. Thank you. <laughs> I should mention that Dan did one for the big one first, but it had words that were too short. Yeah, Mike, Mike Dan did one. Words like big winery. And so the uh, MIT went run around and said, I've done a story. So after you guys had gotten all those metas, you probably noticed all initially that you know the cards are on the map. And once we knew that we were using an MIT map or something, we wanted to actually have it correspond to places. So that's where the sort of idea of having the MIT run around, where you basically went from each from where each rabbit hole was located, if you sort of noticed that, for each of the approximately where each rabbit hole was located around following each suit, answering these small puzzles that have to do with only the area you were given. Um, so, uh, yeah. and so each one had a poster with a QR code on it. The, the QR code was, the QR code could only be, the QR code could only be opened once you, for the, only once you had reached that puzzle, if you had not yet reached that puzzle, it would tell you you had been eaten by a few, I think. <laughs> Um, and so you went through each one of them, they tried to use different parts of the location and tried to actually show you and tried to make you actually correspond to the places. And if we actually had to, we chose the location for the MIT runaround and then had to put those places on the map, which made it hard to draw the lines, that's why it looked so weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, and we tried to have it so that they would not just all go to a place and literally lead off the sign and try to make it interesting. The last ones you went to were all supposed to be slightly harder and gave you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. The last one you went to was, um, was at the end of each one for clubs, spades, and diamonds, which was a bit harder to try and um, make it take a little bit more time for each of those, and those gave you each of them gave you five letter words. They were um, blood, tears, and flesh. Mostly choosing, choosing those three just so it could be really annoying if you've got two of them. And then you try and blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> um, and then you could, and then at that point, you came down here and uh, hit in within the depth. You, um, you got to open up a chest whose locks, who had like word locks that you opened with those three words. And that got you the Warpal Sword to go attack the Jabberwock, who then, of course, told you, no, 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 please don't attack me. I'm also a bit of a And then handed you the deck of playing cards to help you find out who the real beast was. That's this is actually mostly Aaron's idea, but I did the implementation of the card arrangement. Um, once you had the, the cards, if you look through it, um, many of the cards were normal, but 24 of the cards, the ones corresponding to the ones in the MIT round, uh, had these Jabberwock symbols on them, on the edges, and also they had uh, Jabberwockian words on them, some of which were uh, more <laughs> in Jabberwock than others. Um, <laughs> Mim Mimsier is a little pushy. <laughs> 
Bora, I, some Bora goes are gimsier than other Bora goes. <laughs> and sadly, we realized during the hunt we could have used Rection or Be Noisy there, and it would have been. Oh. So, um, what you did, uh, you had to find, there's one way to move, put these into a nice 4x6 rectangle and match all the colors up. And then once you have that, also every puzzle answer for that corresponding card puzzle in the MIT round is the same length as the Lewis Carrollian word and uh, matches it in exactly one letter. So if you read them, you get those letters for each card, and if you read them in this order, you get, I believe, the beast is Ms. Alice Liddell. Plot <gasps> <laughs> <Not> twist! <laughs> If you got, yeah, that we then. Uh, so, okay, so then you would unlock Wonderland probably before you actually hit the Jabberwock one at a time. Um, if you solve Dormouse first, the first Wonderland whole round you opened up was Tea Party, which was Aaron Bader and Johnny Sirx. Okay, so the Tea Party, it has two different kinds of puzzles. There are four chair puzzles and there are 12 teacup puzzles. Do the chair puzzles first, because those are the ones you unlock first. Um, so the four chair puzzles all have uh, 12 letter answers. And because it's a tea party and there's a giant T on the table, the letter T is important in these answers. They all have three T's, and if you line them all them up, it's only one answer with the T in the first position, testosterone, one with the T in the second position, straight sex, and so on and so forth for all 12 positions. Um, next slide. Okay, so. Then you get the, the 12 teacup answers, um, and they're really, there's three different kinds of tea. There's uh, Yule tea, there's moon tea, which I know isn't a real thing, and there's uh, Chinese oolong tea. Um, and so because the theme has to do with a matter of time, each of these corresponds to some unit of time, but three different sets of unit of time. For example, the, the uh, Yule tea that the doormats is drinking one of the answers is Suzanne Croft, who is one of the Partridge family, so that's the Partridge in a Pear Tree, relates to the holidays of Christmas. And the, uh, the Moon Teas relate to the, the Farmer Almanac Moons. And the Chinese Oolong Tea relates to the 12 months of the Chinese Zodiac. And again, there's 12, uh, it, it goes from 1 to 12 for each position. So the way you solve the puzzle is you match up, you go to the next slide. Um, you match up the, the position, uh, if you read the favorite text, it tells you for each time the Mad Hatter was thinking that someone said something. So, and then you can find where that person was sitting when they said something. So, for example, for the doormats again, you see that uh, E corresponds to the number one because it's the first day of Christmas, and testosterone has the T in the, has the, key in the first position, so the doormats are sitting there. You find where the beast was sitting, as per the flavor text, and the, the beast was at 12 at that time, so you index into the 12th letter of Suzanne Croft, you get G. You do that for all of them, you get give him a hand, which is the answer to the meta. You give him his hands, and you give him his stock, and you can finally meet his team. Right. Yes, so uh, I wrote the mock turtle. Um, Aaron helped, uh, and so the the uh, the mock turtle's problem is that because of the beast coming through and also the general craziness of all the teams coming through, uh, he lost his spot at the tea party. There's no room at the tea table for him, and so uh, he's lonely and sad and has to make do with cardboard mock friends. Um, Exactly. <laughs> uh, so in the meta, you get a uh, a bunch of clues with blanks in them, and each clue also has two uh, numbers at the end. Uh, if you once you get the puzzle answers, you put those in the blanks. There's uh, really one one ish place where each thing makes sense. So, for example, James Bond, the creator and family, are Flemings. Snoopy's airplane in reality is a doghouse. And referring to the flavor text says things about bits and pieces of other creatures, the mock turtle, and also mock versions of his friends. Each one of the clue answers is exactly two letters off from a Wonderlandian creature or character. 
So Flemings becomes Flamingo, Doghouse becomes Dormouse, etc. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, you take the letters from the original creatures that have been replaced, you put them in the order given by the numbers, and it tells you how to make more room at the tea party, at the tea table, namely make edits to your table schema. <laughs> People wanted me to point, it, point them out. Uh, what Wormtongue does before being shot is kill the wizard. Yeah. Build the lizard. Uh, and also, uh, in the yes, uh, in the novel Alice in Wonderland, the Hatter is just the Hatter, but he's commonly known as the Mad Hatter. So focus of downfall me works either way. <laughs> Great. And now, for, for everyone's favorite, Wonderland yes. pull round. <laughs> so there's a backstory on this. In like 2006 or something, after we'd written Time Bandits and stuff, Harvey said to me that, that's funny. <laughs> He wanted to write a backwards hunt if we ever want to hunt again, where um, it would start with the final run around with all teams. <laughs> <laughs> and you would eventually wind up at kickoff. <laughs> Harvey and I, once we picked a theme, I was like, all right, somebody in Wonderland must do something backwards. And I started like flipping through the novel and flipping through Looking Glass. And I found the character of the White Queen who experienced his time backwards. And I was like, great, we're using the White Queen. What are we doing? So I was like, red things, white things. First I was like, white things, and then uh, white things. And I first, first we only used the Beatles half, which actually came out second, which is the Beatles had a red album compilation and a white album. But then that was too soluble, so then Harvey and I are both huge baseball fans. I was like, Harvey, the Red Sox and the White Sox. I was like, I hate the White Sox. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> I feel terrible. I'm a Twins fan. So, the way the round works, when you open the round, you're told, congratulations, you've solved the meta puzzle, which I'm hoping was kind of confusing. <laughs> yes. And then... <laughs> you had to bring the White Queen a red herring, and all the other rounds you get a, something from the character at the end, well, this is backwards, so you have to bring her something at the beginning. We accepted anything. Um, we're gonna give a prize for the best one, so I'll hold on here, but we got a lot of just pictures of red fish. Yeah. One team, and now I can't remember which one, came in with a baby, <laughs> and I, my first thought was, oh my god, don't give me the baby. <laughs> herring, which I love, <laughs> which eat. Uh, they were the only team that did that. Uh, so you, when you do that, she tells you, great, now you have the answers to some of the puzzles, which I'm hoping is still confusing. Um, so those answers then link to the puzzles where all of the puzzles had the answers sort of, hopefully, obviously, some more obvious than others, you know, either the first letter of all the clues just said the answer to this puzzle is Lynn, or you know, something like that. The answer was in every puzzle, trivially. It might have even just been a file name, I think, for Cronin with the Nancat. It was just Cronin.html, that's where you found the answer. But if you actually solved the puzzle, that would give you the title to the puzzle. So the answers were all, oh, back up. The answers on the light squares here were all the last names of Red Sox players and 
You didn't get all of them at first, so you had to figure that out based on Williams, Lynn, Sullivan, Sullivan, and Rice, I think? Yeah. Originally, we just were going to give Williams, Lynn, Sullivan, and Sullivan, or maybe it was Williams, <coughs> Sullivan, Sullivan, and Rice. And during our test solving, poor Chris Lyon discovered that the 1919 White Sox mm. had a Williams, a Sullivan, oh, and a Rice. Yo. <laughs> And he went on this terrible, terrible path for like three hours, <laughs> trying to work out like the positions maybe or something, something. And then Harvey never watching this happen. We're like, we need to give a fifth answer. This is not solvable. So we were originally only gave four, but we gave five. So then you figured out that you know Ted Williams was number nine, and he's the I, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then you could back solve the rest of the answers. Twenty-one is Clemens. They were all the player that held the number the longest. The one where there was a tie was Sullivan, so we just gave you Sullivan so you didn't have to deal with breaking the tie. Um, after you then solved six titles or enough time passed that we decided to be nice, we unlocked the dark squares. We probably shouldn't have allowed you to guess the answers to the dark squares right away, because you were never going to guess them. Um, but I know c -Tech guessed all of the Cincinnati Reds players, and my favorite, they were like, well, red herrings, we have the red socks, herrings kind of, so they started guessing all the Marlins players. <laughs> I can't name a single Marlins player. <laughs> so then the other red squares were all Beatles songs, and these were all tracks from the Beatles Red Album compilation, which conveniently has exactly 26 tracks. Um, <laughs> So you got three of them, hopefully by that time you had caught on to the red thing and were able to back solve the rest and unlock the other songs. Um, and that was how you opened the round. You had to back solve to open the round. So, yeah, so Nowhere Man was track 20 on this red album compilation, that gives you a T, and that's how you back solve the dark square. Uh, which, Chris, is Chris Morse here or is he asleep? Oh, there he is! Chris used to, I used to live it with Chris, and uh, he told me that as soon as he saw the Red Sox, White Sox thing, he knew I wrote that round, and then as soon as he saw the Beatles thing, there was no doubt, and he started wondering what else could go wrong. <laughs> and then he opened the curling puzzle in this round, and I was like, okay. <laughs> so then you saw for the titles, and you started with red things, and you're trying to get things white, so on the Red Sox answers, all of the titles were words found only once on the Beatles' White Album in a song. So Slide only appears in Helter Skelter, which is the 23rd track in the White Album, so that gives you a letter W. On the Beatles' answer squares, the titles were all the last names of White Sox players, which we tried to choose White Sox players who mostly hadn't heard of, who only played for the team once. There's a story on Daryl Boston, who wore number eight. This summer, I went two-way White Sox game in Chicago, actually behind, and I was like, oh, oh, you know, the meta editor told you to grow the things, like, there's Daryl Boston, and he's wearing number 19, he's now the first base coach, and, like, and that, or 17, and that is cute. There's no cute in my answer, because I think my puzzle is broken. <laughs> but we decided he only ever wore eight as a player, you can barely find his number anywhere in the internet, so hopefully that didn't throw anybody off, but, um, yeah, so that's how, so then you basically did the same thing in reverse with the white things, you took the track of the white album, or the jersey number of the White Sox player, and then if you read, uh, starting, in, yeah, snake from the bottom left, it spells clean with ivory soap, and that is how you fix the White Queen problem, which is that all of her things are red. So that is the White Queen round. Uh, the other thing is, I believe, uh, now that you know how it works, and we, uh, the one word that appears only once in the lyrics, there's a song, Why Don't We Do It In The Road? And I believe uh, our answers for that were watching and road. So those are the only two conceivable answers. So uh, if you back solved it, you know, congratulations. I told my dad about this round, and he was like, are you using Carlton Fisk? No. <laughs> Because Carlton Fisk was number 27 for the Red Sox and 72 for the White Sox. You can't do this without including Carlton Fisk. So we gave him an homage in the flavor text when we said 27 is 72. Also, Rain Falling Up refers to the Beatles song, which is the first track they did with backwards singing. Wow. <laughs> Best Harry. Monty. 
Uh, Humpty was written by Hannah Star Robinitz, who's still in San Francisco, like she was the last time I talked about her other book. <laughs> uh, Hannah sent me an email saying she's a huge fan of I Spy and she wanted to write an I Spy inspired meta. Uh, as again, Chris Morse correctly guessed, a lot of these things are actually mine because Hannah lives near me. Um, so it's just a collection of random objects. And then there's a poem at the bottom that you can't read. It's I Spy, a set of triplets, an internet trend. Of some sticks in the bean that no one can, I almost have to memorize, but I can't read it. Um, each line of the poem, which you unlock puzzle piece by puzzle piece, so you don't get it until you solve the number, corresponds to one of the answer words in the hunt. So for example, I spy a set of triplets goes with the answer word squiggles. There is a set card somewhere in there. I think it's visible in the mirror. You probably can't see it in this resolution. All of the images have braille, a braille number on them, if you zoom in closely. You take that number and index into the answer word in the order of the poem, and that spells ice optrophobic, uh, which is fear of seeing one's own reflection in the mirror. And that's how that one was solved. Humpty Dumpty is an ostrich egg, by the way. I actually knocked him off the table after we shot this picture, and he broke. <laughs> Good idea to try to super them back together in case we had to re-photograph it, and it turns out you cannot put the pieces <laughs> in. <laughs> Hi again. Uh, the caucus race. So the caucus race, um, the actual caucus race involves a whole bunch of birds running around in some kind of crazy, nonsensical way, and so we said, oh, let's do a meta with some birds. Um, you probably didn't, actually this, this chart does not include any of the puzzle answers. Um, the puzzle answers are all synonyms or antonyms of birds, things like uh, jingoist for hawk. Uh, so the blue ones, the ones that are in blue up here are synonyms, those were the yes answers. All the birds have one puzzle where they're saying yes, and one where they're saying no, because they're very indecisive because it's a cautious race. So uh, hawk is jingoist, albatross is a uh, 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 millstone, engulf, derrick, uh, there's other ones. And um, then the no answers are all hopefully uniquely uh, antonyms of birds. Uh, uh, valiant was chicken, um, cuckoo is sane, cardinal is secondary, uh, things like that. Uh, sorry if I'm giving away puzzle answers, but it is wrap up. <laughs> and then the idea is, uh, so you get these pairs of birds, uh, this is not the puzzle order, and in fact within the things you don't know the order, the idea is every pair of birds you get out of a matched pair of puzzles has a unique pair of enumerations, and there should be exactly one row in which you can place them. Uh, you'll notice one of them is a five and a five, so you don't know which one to put on the left and the right. That's why there's a plus and minus given for that one, so that you know which is which. If you do this and you take the marked numbers and move them to the side, the yes side and the no side, and move down, you get allergic to down, which is why Alice does not want to be anywhere near the caucus race. Now, funny story. Um, the original version of this, uh, we mentioned that the Humpty Dumpty meta had uh, the, the picture given to you in pieces. Uh, when I originally proposed this, the ballot was actually going to be split into four pieces, and you're going to be given one after solving a certain number of puzzles, solving a certain number of puzzles. Uh, I may have blatantly stolen this from one of the Zizzlevarian metas, but let's not go there. <laughs> the, um, uh, and uh, somebody figured out, oh, wait, 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 that makes so much more sense for the Humpty Dumpty meta, so that it's broken into pieces, so we should do that. Uh, so what do we do with the ballot? Well, maybe we'll give it to them after they solve a certain number. Or maybe, I don't know, let's just give it at the beginning. I mean, it's not like then We're Up All Nights Get Lucky is going to solve this meta with 5 out of 14 <laughs> answers. <laughs> so the, actually, the, we did this sort of in reverse order. Like the first uh, one or last time that we probably unlocked um, was the night round. But anyway, so when you get to the knight's round, you're presented with this chessboard and then this description of how the knights have had this sparring battle. And there's some rules about how they can uh, get through this, this kind of gauntlet of enemy pieces to capture the enemy game. Um, and there's some words written on here and the rest of the things. It says, let's watch that. Okay, so each, what? Oh, sorry. So uh, each answer in the night's round is, has two words in it. The, the, we'll focus on the first word, it's a two word phrase. We'll focus on the first word first. 
Uh, there, it, they are between one and eight letters long, and there's two that start with A, two that start with B, two that start with C, and so on and so forth. And the way you can do this is to place the pieces on the board is if it's A8, for example, for uh, Archduke Otto, you put that piece, it's a white knight, on the eighth, um, on the, uh, eighth uh, number uh, uh, row of the, first, of the eighth column. Um, and so on and so forth for all of them. And then once you place all the pieces, there's a fairly trivial path that takes them through the, the little gauntlet base and ends up the enemy king. Um, and there's, it's uniquely solvable. Uh, you can probably do it with you know, missing a couple pieces also. So now the next part is what to do with the second parts of the word. Go to the next one. Um, so they're all four letters long. So you find whatever column they were, and if it's the white ones, you put them on the, the white squares of that column. The red ones, you put them on the red squares of that column. And you'll notice that the, word, the letters we gave you at the beginning are correct. So this would be a little indication that you're doing things right. Then you read out those letters, alternating red and white, you get four to pieces by games, and that explains why Alice left the knights to go somewhere else, because she was too bored. <laughs> Bands. Woo, woo, woo. All right. Uh, so for events, we decided we took a little survey of what people liked uh, events in the past, and I think the most important thing with an event is it should be fun. Uh, so we hope we did that one. But also, I find it really frustrating when we're at an event and we don't come away with the answer because you can't really explain to your teammates what happened at the event, and you're like, I, I, this happened, and I wrote all this down, but I have no idea what's going on. So. Uh, we made sure that every team that came to the event had the answer before they left. Um, we also wanted to make sure all the events were interactive and we wanted to make sure that everybody was doing something at every event so you weren't passively watching uh, for the entire thing and we wanted the teams to interact. Um, yeah, so I think, oh, and we wanted them all to be under an hour and I think they almost all came in in about 15 minutes. Auditions! Alright, woo! Um, so last year when we run, oh, when we won uh, the hunt, Rob and I were cleaning and we were like, we must do an audition event, that's Rob over there. Um, and I was like, yes, let's do it. And so we knew we were doing an audition event, but we didn't really know how it was going to work. And then when the theme was Wonderland, we knew we had to do a weird audition event. Um, so that made it a little easier. So in Wonderland, uh, instead of you giving us the she music you want to sing, we tell you what we want you to sing, except we don't actually give you the sheet music in the right order. Uh, so we gave all the teams, we split them up into eight groups, we gave them songs uh, with notes, and we had it completely out of order. And originally, that's all we were going to do, and that was not solvable. Uh, I was like, of course they can figure out what song it is. No. I, I uh, so then we started just doing up and down, and still wasn't solvable. Um, and some of the songs, there was a lot of constraining going on. So some of the songs ended up with a lot of little hints as what was next, and I'm happy to say by a couple days before the hunt, uh, all the bugs were out, and all eight songs were easily put in order. Unfortunately, uh, apparently no one has seen the movie Peter Pan, the Disney movie. I'm sorry for that team, you really should rent it, it's really good. Uh, but, you know, we, all, we would have told you the answer if you hadn't come up with it eventually. Uh, so then they had the songs, they said we want to sing this song, we said great! We gave them the she music of the song that they were going to sing, and we told them that in Wonderland, you have to sing one word at a time, as you could see in our video. Uh, so then we had them all go, and we said, you know, make sure you act and have some choreography. Uh, it was great. It was great that eight teams all sang their songs, and then Rob and I had to pick one person to give a call back to, which was completely arbitrary. Um, we did it in very different methods. I did it the person who acted the best. I think Rob, I don't know, what would you say? I don't know why. But whatever. So we gave one random person a word. We got them back up for their callback, read the words, and then we had them order the words. And uh, again, thankfully, the words fit in the right spot. And we gave you a, a piece of advice. Uh, we're, all the events were supposed to give you bad pieces of advice that got turned into good pieces of advice at the end, so the, uh, it was not bad advice, it was just kind of useless. Uh, but, uh, notes stem direct, no, no staff position controls at stem direction. 
Uh, and it's true, it's true. So I thought it, uh, it's, it was a staff, we used the word staff, right? Because it was Uber Flowers. All right, he's saying move it on. All right, so the second event. <laughs> Uh, the second event was the Lobster Quadrille, which will be presented by Harvey. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. Okay, so basically, uh, we really knew that we wanted to do a dance party at some point. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's Wonderland, so we knew we wanted it to be the Lobster Quadrille. And then we proceeded to write an entirely separate lobster dance party event puzzle about every six, uh, about every 36 hours. Up until the hunt. <laughs> so, uh, basically, uh, we bought lobsters for every single team, as you know, uh, and we had these lobsters in a box. Yes. Uh, and at, so we were trying to brainstorm how to do a land, uh, dance party with lobsters, and uh, on in here. Uh, started dancing and came up with the phrase crop nom style <laughs> and then we decided to do a uh, shellfish themed dance party we designed a very intricate puzzle which involved taking the answer writing out blanks and then you know erasing the letters just giving you the blanks and then you know giving you letters thus you were able to solve the puzzle by reading the letters, which were the answer. Uh, team showed up. We, uh, you know, this is a full lobster dance card. Uh, each person got a segment of the dance card. We asked you to form lobsters: uh, right claw, left claw, thorax, abdomen, antenna. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yes, we will issue a round about that. And so. Uh, you then, you know, form up, you do the dance, uh, the dance instructor certifies you by writing the letters uh, associated uh, with the dance, and then you go around to all the instructors and get the phrase. Did I miss anything? <coughs> Scooby. Oh. Scooby. Uh, oh, yes, and Anger wins uh, mad props for, you know, being the heroic crop nun. Where is he? Yeah. Yeah. Heroic crop nun. Next, Arts Against Wonderland. Uh, 
When do they go on sale? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're working on that. <laughs> Wonderwang. That's Wonderwang. Uh, yeah, so, so, so Wonderwang. If you solve the puzzle Kalu Kale World, originally that was called Wonderlang, and uh, that's how we got the idea for this event. Uh, so uh, if you've never watched the if you've never watched the game show uh, Number Wang on YouTube, it's like a, a com sketch comedy sketch. I recommend it. Uh, watching it. Uh, we wanted to have something that played off that, um, but just having people shout out numbers, it's surprisingly difficult to have a fun event. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> um, so, of course, in Wonderland, everything is a little different, so people shouted out words instead of numbers, uh, and there were several rounds, and in each round, uh, the correct words matched a rule for the, uh, for the round. So, for example, one was words that ended Y, uh, some of them were a little more complicated, like there was one where you have to add S to the beginning of uh, the word uh, to form another word. Um, and at the end, you came out with a, uh, you, we gave you a list of, uh, of words, and um, there was one word on that word that matched each of the rounds, and that's how you extracted your uh, answer, which was uh, any trip with no vacation flows. Enter. Yes, that, that's important. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, it was fun, it was fast paced, uh, and I think, yeah. <laughs> so, we had events scheduled before we actually decided what we were doing with the events. So at some point we imposed a meta on them, um, which got constrained all of the answers. Um, for a long time, we were planning to give the capsules out at the events where everyone, every team would go home with a capsule or two that had answer words from that event. But then we stopped deciding that the, there was too small a chance of the capsules actually coming back. Um, and this was pretty much Mini Room Goldberg's um, bit, of, bit of a physical puzzle. They told me that all the events had to be under an hour, except they said I could have up to two hours for the meta. We solved it in 1.59. Thank you. <laughs> Was, oh, this was important actually for the runner of uh, White Rabbit has a watch that controls holes. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit holes. Rabbit, like, rabbit, rabbit, rabbit was in there twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after after you've gone through all the rounds, both the, so I think you got went through all the one of the rounds, you had at the end, after you've done each of the Wonderland pull downs, you met with the character and they gave you something. So, Mob Turtle gave you his cardboard cutouts of friends. The Mad Hatter, because he's crazy, just gave you a hex wrench. <laughs> <laughs> the White Queen gave you this square weird thing that, if you are actually old enough and look closely, is actually oh god. <laughs> And from the other three, and from the other three rounds, you would learn weaknesses that Alice had. She was afraid of her own reflection, four pieces by games, and allergic to down. But the p things that you had were not the things that you could use against her. So we decided at some point that we the, that point of the round would be to get those items that you needed to get those items that you need to, like, actually use against Alice, and uh, then go forth and actually get Alice out of one of them. Um, so, the first thing that was there was the Duchess. What you mainly did was, you walked into the room, the Duchess was there, and her baby just wouldn't stop crying. All the pepper she gave could not help her. <laughs> so, um, they were there, and there was just a whole bunch of stuff on the table. With, with letters on them, and you'll have no idea what to do with it. And you see this sort of turntable that has no needle, and a video that shows you how to make, uh, oh, we did show a video, sorry. Turntable, sorry, turntable, and you have to learn to make uh, your own actual 
they interplay the vacuum. So you basically make a cone and attach a sewing needle to it, and you spin the table and play on the vacuum so you can actually hear what it says. And if you hear, you can hear, you hear words, but there's also something else there if you play it one way. And then you realize if you play it backwards, it says the other part of it. And so each one formed words in two different bits, formed two parts of words that were objects on the table. Oh, there we go. I'm really sorry about that. This is close enough that I could lift this. All right. Um, so, so when you play, um, so when you play both forward and backwards, you find actual names of some of the objects that are like. Two parts of words, so there was there was like baseball, so base was said forward, was ball said one of them was said one way, and when you played it the other way, it was said the other word for it, and so when you that therefore you found out which objects you needed, and you had the like order that you looked through it, and then when you got it all, it said um, sing I am the walrus as a lullaby, and so then you had to sing the Beatles song, I Am The Wallace, as a lullaby, and that actually got the Duchess's baby to go to sleep. The Duchess is... Oh. Is it playing codex? Because somebody on codex brought a ukulele The Duchess is so grateful of this, she allows you to take some object from there. And if you're smart enough to notice, there is a mirror. It's in fact one of the ones that... I know, I was showing the other side to show, it's actually one of the ones with a letter on it that was used for the answer. And so you grab the mirror so that you have something that you can use to uh, show Alice her reflection. After that, there was... The, after that, there was the Queen of Hearts and her bed. Essentially, uh, yeah. So, uh, as mentioned, this was built by Mark Feldmeyer, who is currently asleep. Uh, but I did a number of uh, test solving and stuff with this. Uh, so, you come, you see the bed, uh, the White Queen gives a spiel about how she has to return it to Wonder Ikea. Uh, it needs it taken apart before she can do so. It has a whiteboard on the head where she records her dreams, yada yada. You notice that there are these little um, indentations that you can slide back and forth, uh, and there are numbers written on the top. Uh, part of an initial part of the puzzle is trying to get both sides out at once because if you can only get one side out by pushing the other. Uh, so you do that kinetically. Someone fixed this when I didn't want them to. Like that. Uh, so then you know you have to take this apart, and you have a tool that can be used to take things apart, but there, there are no uh, <laughs> places to use this as an Allen wrench. And so I'd like to, um, I think the best interaction here was with metaphysical plant, <laughs> where they were like, what does, what does this mean? Oh, that, that L on the thing is kind of thin. It looks kind of like the thing. Nah, there's no way there could be a magnet in there. <laughs> <laughs> So you put the Allen wrench on the L, you move it to the arrow, and this disengages a magnetic latch. <laughs> and then you have a lock picking puzzle. And you just pick that like a lock. You, you try to slide out the baseboard, and uh, you see where it has tension. It's set. Uh, you see where it has tension, and then you fix that particular pin. So it is a lock, and when you get the right combination, the baseboard slides all the way out, and the queen says, oh, that's where that down pillow went. Uh -huh. Feel free to keep it 
you know, uh, cut off your head and put it on there. <laughs> The final part of it, the oh, part of it was fairy chess. So fairy chess teams were presented with three boards uh, that had Nurikabe's on them uh, and a handful of polyominoes that went with each board. And they gotten from the mock turtle a bunch of uh, a bunch of cardboard characters. And so the story there is that the lion and the unicorn are fighting for uh, fighting for the crown. They always play chess, and the lion always beats the unicorn. But this time the unicorn has put the lion and made one on every single board. The lion got so angry that he flipped the board and took a piece from each board. So you have to reconstruct the boards by solving the narakabe and putting the polyominoes back on. And that sets up a chess puzzle. And you have your you have thank you, uh, your pieces from the uh, pieces from the mock turtle uh, became fairy chess pieces on the boards with special Wonderland moves. Um, so teams had to figure out what the new move rules were. We gave them new uh, new move patterns for uh, we have three pieces, the sheep, the fish footman, and the walrus. And then based on that, you had to place uh, each of the three pieces on the right board uh, to help the unicorn. And then the unicorn is so grateful that he lets you take the black king, force him to bring me on it, and becomes a giant black king, which we use later on. So the, uh, the the final logic puzzle was a hedge maze. We wanted to, um, the storyline was Alice came from MIT through the rabbit holes into Wonderland and was wreaking havoc. So we wanted to push Alice back out of Wonderland into MIT and close all the rabbit holes. And so um, we basically had a uh, an idea for a logic puzzle that we needed to direct Alice through the maze out the rabbit hole, and we wanted to do these these uh, three pieces. And so we. Um, Came up with some movement rules. Uh, Alice moved in a very prescribed fashion and interacted with the obstacles in a particular way since she was allergic to. Oh, also, Alice was holding on to the white rabbit. The white rabbit had the, uh, the pocket watch, which you learned <laughs> after the, uh, the events method that the pocket watch would, would control the rabbit holes. So you needed to get Alice out the rabbit hole by, by leaving the rabbit in Wonderland to close the, the hole behind her. And so um, Alice enters the maze holding the, the rabbit. Uh, if she ever encountered the down pillow, which she was allergic to, she would sneeze and drop the rabbit. And if the rabbit would move away from her, rabbit, Alice would try to catch up with the rabbit. If, they ever, uh, if, um, if Alice ever caught the rabbit, then the whole process would repeat again. Um, <laughs> so you need to use the other pieces to keep Alice away from the rabbit. Um, the, the, the chess piece, she was bored to, bored to pieces by game, so she would fall asleep and wait for a turn, allowing the rabbit to get a bit farther away. The, uh, the mirror she was scared by and she would run away from, so that would made a sort of a moving obstacle for her to, to keep her away. And so um, the, the teams would, would see the maze in lobby 7 or lobby 13, depending on when they got there, place the obstacles and um, summon Alice and the rabbit to the, the head maze. They would move around and interact with the obstacles. If they made a mistake, the Alice and the rabbit would be stuck there for in an infinite loop, so they would summon the griffin, who would come swooping by, take them away, and they could go and reset the maze. When they succeeded, um, Alice basically sneezed over the uh, the, the pillow into the, the wormhole, uh, into the rabbit hole, and escaped MIT. The rabbit got scared and ran ran away, and so he had to track down the rabbit. And um... okay, I wrote this last part. Would you like to know when I wrote it? <laughs> I wrote it around between around 6 and 8 p.m. on Saturday night. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, the runaround doesn't exactly have an ending right now. Okay, let's fix that. Um, so, the rabbit is traumatized by being kidnapped by Alice. He freaks out and runs back through the Wonder Hole. Wonder Hole! Wonder Hole! To MIT. So the teams need to follow him back to MIT, so the teams go back to MIT too. Um, but where did the, the rabbit go? So the teams got a sheet that the rabbit dropped. At this point, it lists, it's very simple because they've already had to solve all of these extravagant puzzles. Um, it's just a list of all of the Wonderland Center puzzles with a number. You extract, using that number to extract a letter from the answer to all of the Wonderland Center holes. So we hope that you solved, solved enough of the puzzles. Um, you get the 
what is the exact phrase? Um, rabbit hides by Fairchild building tornado machine. Um, Randa luckily knew exactly where this was and <laughs> ran straight to it. Um, Lucky actually also had one person who knew vaguely where it was, um, and and we got them there. Um, I don't. After that, um, we kind of cut this for the, the later runaround. Um, so this is in building 36, um, the mezzanine level, which is actually not on the MIT floor plans for building 36. Um, there's a little area where there's this mezzanine level underground. Um, it's the basement. And you look down into the sub-basement. There's a balcony, and you can look down into the sub-basement. So when the team gets there, the rabbit is down um, below the team. And the rabbit says, we need to close the rabbit holes, but I, I'm so confused. I don't remember where any of them are. Um, you know, I can close them with my pocket watch. So the teams have to lead the rabbit back to, there are now four holes open at MIT. They need to lead them back to where they found the caterpillar, where they found the tweedles, um, where they just had one in lobby seven. And then finally, the last one, they have to lead him back to the dormouse, who was in the president's courtyard. And I want to talk about the final. So you get back to President's Courtyard, which is where the dormouse was. The white rabbit's excited. He's like, oh, it's the last rabbit hole. Thank you so much. Jumps through without closing the hole. <laughs> Rody appears with John Galt, says, wait, wait, wait. We're not done yet. Take this guy, too. <laughs> John Galt gets thrown into Wonderland. <laughs> At this point, everyone's happy because John Galt is gone. The Cheshire Cat's like, well, that's unfortunate that the white rabbit left. Um, I'm sure there's something here that you can help close the rabbit hole with. Bye! Jumps into Wonderland. Uh, at which point, the team was supposed to search President's Courtyard to find this, which is a large watch. Um, the hands at the very top, it's written open, close. It was set to open, you moved it to closed, and you closed the rabbit hole and won the hunt. And the lines for Anna and I literally said Rudy and Anna and ad lib. So <laughs> Anna just put his in his pocket, and when he ran through the rabbit hole, he dropped the script. And as soon as she said he's left something behind, like six people on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> I had to jump into that door. I swear that's not important. That's what's dropping behind. Um, <laughs> the actual coin. Uh, <laughs> who, who wants to talk about theater? <laughs> All right, so in addition to this giant coin that the team found in PC, we, we also made these little coins. So we had a bit of an internal debate over whether we wanted our coin to be a coin or a watch, and it ended up being a coin, and so at one point, Brody was like, okay, can we have one big watch in the runaround? And she was like, like, play with Lave style, no, er. and, and she forgot that she said this, so then I came in at the, uh, during like prep week and was like, well, this is our coin. <laughs> um, so anyway, we also have this smaller coin. Uh, this is the, uh, go back to the other one first. So this is the front side. Um, it's a clock to symbolize the white, the white rabbit's watch. Um, the four suits on it, and something that people keep pointing out is that the year is not on it, but the year is on it. Um, the clock is set to 8.14, which in military time is 2014. <laughs> Alright, you can go to the other side now. So, the other side here in the middle, there's Alice looking incredibly grumpy that we took her out of Wonderland and sent her back to MIT. Um, <laughs> And then there's an icon for each one of the rounds. At the top, there's the Cheshire Cat, who sort of starts the whole thing out. Then there's the three one, uh, Wonderland characters you meet in MIT, Starmouse, Caterpillars, Tweedles. Then on the runaround, you meet the Jabberwock. Um, and there are the three Wonderland whole rounds. Yeah. And there are the three uh, Wonderland center rounds. And then there's the White Rabbit at the end. Um, so that symbolizes all the things that you do. Um, 
uh, largely by James here, partially by myself, and partially by Maya, who's not here.
Um, it's very nice, and if you enter, on a lot of these there's also meta art um, to show literally every piece of art in the hunt would take a very long time, but there's also meta art on some of the pages that you can look at if you're interested. Um, and I did all the meta art. Let's see, caucus race. Caucus race was, we wanted to depict all of the birds <laughs> being grumpy and uh, not really knowing what to do and kind of fighting with each other, but also the original caucus race, which was a race. So there's the racetrack right in there. Um, this was sketched by James and then I inked and colored it. Also, the animation this was particularly fantastic because the bird right there poops. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie said, we're going to make it poop, and Laura was like, really? He's like, don't worry, it'll be classy. <laughs> The last one is Humpty Dumpty. Um, Humpty was drawn by Hannah, whose name I really can't pronounce. Star Robinance. She's also still not here. Um, but then I painted it. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice. The animation is the little, little candle flames going back and forth. Um, oh, right, the events page. Okay. The events page. Oh, yeah, yeah. Elsewhere. Like elsewhere. Okay. Is that in our website? Oh, <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay. Our events page is a picture of Stata. I actually drew this before we totally had an idea of what was going to happen with the website, and then we were really sad because we were maybe not going to get to use it, and so someone came up with, "All right, just stick it in the events page." <laughs> Um, the animation here is with the little like window does a thing and it's kind of cute. Um, so I was going to talk about the coin, but I already talked about that. Um, the other thing is that I did costumes and props. Uh, so some people are up here on the stage wearing costumes. If you're, if you're in costume, you can go up to this front bit. Some of these are pretty hilarious. Um, Alice and the White Rabbit are really adorable. Really. Um, we have our lion and our unicorn over there. Those masks are pretty fantastic, although the unicorn turned out a lot scarier than we were hoping. It, it's, they smell so awful like spray paint that we had to actually exile them from HQ and like set them outside the door because we couldn't handle smelling them. Um, we also have a Tweedle here, the King of Hearts, who I don't know if all of you got to see him because he was at an event, but that's a pretty fantastic costume. Um, the Mad Hatter and the Queen of Hearts. And of course, uh, the, oh, the Mock Turtle Head, yeah. And... <laughs> And uh, Terrence over there. Oh, we're holding the sword. So he is a. He can no longer be stopped. He's got him and the sword. Okay. One thing I wanted to mention that never got mentioned actually, I think, is that. Uh, we made it mandatory to do all of the events and to get on the final run around and find the coin. You had to solve the events meta, which means you had to go to all the events. And that's because we think events are important. Yeah. Uh, right. Statistics. Yay. Let's look at it quickly because everybody's hungry and we have food for you in lobby 13. Now. All right. Hey. So one of the first puzzles released, designed by Lauren Herring yet again, was Safety First. Uh, we thought last year when Sages had to give everyone first aid kits and had to repeatedly say the first aid kit is not a puzzle, we were like, we're going to make the first aid kit puzzle. <laughs> uh, so a lot of people solved it. It involved a little box that if you opened it had car uh, a bunch of cards which you would pile together and assemble. This was printed in a sheet and we used paper cutters to cut them. This led to two injuries, three, two, very quickly, involving people cutting themselves with a paper cutter and thankfully having band-aids from the first aid kits. <laughs> so that was funny. Um, three teams solved every 
single puzzle in the hunt. see where we put some releases for every team to kind of push everything forward uh, for the smaller teams and uh, <laughs> this one is submissions by team <laughs> sorry <laughs> This is Salt Puzzle by Team. Now, this, this was a pretty close hunt. Um, it was really close. The, the team that, uh, that solved the most puzzles won, but the, the uh, uh, left at, uh, Lucky rather, was really close by them because they had solved more metas for the longest time. So it was very close. Uh, uh, this is the submit rate uh, over time. It's hard to see, but you can see, obviously, it dips at night. Um, and uh, the peak was really just uh, eight hours after the kickoff. Okay, this is medium salt time by round, so you can see that uh, the salt of a puzzle in the round. Um, so from this we can figure that the mock turtle took people the longest to solve puzzles in the mock turtle round. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is how many puzzles you had when you solved the meta. So you can, uh, caucus race is smaller than we would have liked it to have been. <laughs> That's okay. Tea Party, of course, was the, the beast for this one. You had to have practically every puzzle to solve that one. Okay, uh, this is uh, puzzles that took the longest to solve. And uh, Mad Cocktail Party seems to be the winner there. Uh, this is puzzles that were the sh took the shortest amount of time to solve. Of course, the events were, were really quick, but uh, I guess the first one that's not an event is Opposites are not downbeats. So. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> the most submitted wrong answer was ice cream for stage select. The answer to the answer was ice cream sandwich. <laughs> so I had to keep reading. Um, the second most, and this is the best ever, is Quagmire. <laughs> So th there's some other uh, wrong answers that are funny, but wouldn't post them. Uh, GeoGuessr scores. Uh, <laughs> some teams clearly took the, the GeoGuessr challenge seriously. <laughs> uh, and got uh, 32 something you know, thousand points. And there's a tie for first place, by the way. Uh, so it must be the maximum score or something. Yeah, this is another puzzle where there was a sort of answer you could get that wasn't right. And 
this is the last thing. We, we logged the number of interactions, uh, you know, like phone call operations, operator things by, by, by team member. Sorry. Oops. Anyway. So, great. Well, there was a slide about this. I thought it was closer. So, Zaz, uh, I'll have the numbers exactly later, but Zaz answered something like 38, 100, and 8. Maybe now more now. There's like a, around one in five chance that you talk to Zaz. <laughs> nice. 18.4%. So, <laughs> so don't tell my department. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we had, had a lot of phone calls. Um, I guess we meant to have more on here. The latest solve, I guess now, right. not anymore. <laughs> as of when I was making these slides oh. right before our wrap up, the we'll safer Sephiroth, which we'll was solved at 1058 this morning by test solution to ignore. Um, we have a few words. Yeah. I, I was responsible for uh, haranguing teams that, still, uh, that registered early enough into submitting a title for the conference presentation, and some of them, some teams actually provided abstracts as well. Um, given our theme, it is very hard to not give a prize to Frumius Vandersnatch. <laughs> For their paper entitled Proving the Meta Existence of the Quasi Jabberwocky via Subjective Ungravity Spheroids. <laughs> we might post the abstract later. I don't think you want to read it now. <laughs> A very close runner up, and I think they should also be recognized, is yeah. Palindrome, yeah. who created a palindrome abstract when combined with their title. <laughs> We got gifts from you. Uh, Erin was playing the white queen when she was given a white, a red hair ring. Uh, both funny and a little creepy. Uh, I think the best food uh, by Straw Poll was the wild rice pudding brought by Sea Tech Astronomy for the puzzle with the answer Garcia Parra. Uh, the best bait. Uh, was that Notorious P.I.G. actually made Twin Pops and brought them to the Tweedle brothers, even though we didn't need them. <laughs> that was very nice of them. Uh, and uh, Chu, Chu here, uh, Chu decided to give a, was indecisive about um, the Revenge of Yuki Nagato episode 00, zero the answer to oh, which yeah. was a phrase, film a laser scene, yes. which we then asked you to do. Um, and then Moral, illegal, and fattening, and rage against the Quebecois both submitted uh, exceptional laser scenes. So, if you can send somebody from your team up to the front, we have something for you, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> somebody was in, somebody was supposed to be in charge of the wars. Uh, just email us. Are we in the? Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's Amy's coming. Amy's coming. It's her hair. She says to me, she's like, I'm almost dying of green, but this is great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving, moving quite along quite rapidly. Uh, we want people to have a lot of fun. People were having a lot of fun, and people were also being uh, kind and gracious to each other. And uh, in particular, IIF and Left is Excess for the Reader had an ice cream social. It was so nice. And dog centers. And dog centers. Yeah. Woo! Much, much event. Much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and on the run around, I want to Reggie, I want to give a special thanks to uh, Left Out, who uh, started the final run around, and uh, they were at the bed, which is a rather beast of a puzzle, I guess, for most teams. And uh, the thing is, Lucky and uh, Random were also on the run around at that time, and uh, Lucky was had finished the previous phase again. We ended up having to shuffle people around which which part of the run around they did first, and so we called Left Out, and we said. I left out, do you want to win the hunt? <laughs> to which they said no. <laughs> and we said, would you be willing to let somebody else take a shot at the bed uh, because they want to win the hunt? And they said yes, and then 30 seconds later they called us back and said no, we still want to do the bed, and we said no, 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 you can do the bed later. And they said great, and so that's what happened. Um, <laughs> Run around first, and then let's.
monkey was right behind them and started the run around. And then Harvey Jones started freaking out. But he had a plan, and we were going to execute the plan. <laughs> Very slowly and methodically. And sometimes I needed him to talk to Laura right now, because he had about a minute, but he was first going to write down exactly what I told him to say, but I could not take the phone myself. Uh, and then Left Out started the runaround, and Lucky had already done the other two things, which is why we needed them to get to the bed, except that Left Out had started the bed, and... Yeah. So, we were a little panicked, and then Codex was also very close, and we were like, well, I don't know what to do if they are ready to start before Random gets to the hedge maze, because we don't have anywhere to put them. But luckily, Random got to the hedge maze, and we were able to get... I don't think we ever had actually four at the same time, but it was very, very close. And then when I came back to Codex, death started, and there was a lot of chaos happening Saturday night, Sunday morning. Yes, I have special words for Dave. <laughs> right. This is numbers for Zaz. This is the total number of human interactions, phone calls we've placed to teams. Wow. Almost 21,000. Uh, thanks for your excitement. And Zaz is only 0.4% of those, and then so that we end before it begins one hour and 50 minutes. Uh, some quick announcements of Muter Hunts. Battle 9. Hi. Um, because uh, there are, in fact, for those of you who just do puzzle hunts once a year, there are other ones. <laughs> do them, they're great. Some of them are online and some of them are in this area. Um, April 5th, Battle 9 is going to be in Providence. There'll be more information on the internet later. Battle, Boston area. <laughs> and um, Dash 6 is April 26th, but la when I checked this morning, there is no, currently no group running it in Boston that I know of. So if you would like to be that group, and you're not already running Craft and Lawn, um, <laughs> you should contact Play Dash, whoever it is, and, and make that happen because Dash is cool and should happen in Boston every time it happens. And it happens in other cities as well. Yes. yes and if you're not from Boston, you can do Dash elsewhere. And the very and penultimate thing is uh, that you should go and look and see if there's missing information in the archives. There's a field and I think it's the archives. And I think the last word should go to Aaron. Oh. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for coming. Oh, where is the... Yeah. So all the teams can come up. We have status sheets if Johnny wants to show them, to show you, you know, how many puzzles you solved when. They're actually color-coded. Blue was the first 12 hours of the hunt, and then green was the next 12, and then yellow, and then orange, and then pink. Rainbow, reverse rainbow order, starting with blue. Oh, oh, and we have prizes for the teams that finished the runaround but didn't get a coin. Um, second, third, fourth? No. No, we have all of them. Second, third, and fourth teams can either choose one of the chess boards or cards, a Cards Against Wonderland deck. <laughs> teams can get what's left. <laughs> uh, so, <coughs> what? Oh, the teams were Lucky, Left Out, Codex, Death, IAF, Palindrome, and Plant. Oh, Palindrome actually came before IAF, but we made them wait because we were really tired, and we had about five people in HQ, not including myself, because I just went to bed after leaving Codex for the whole run around. Um, and we apparently heard on the phone 25 people in there and cheering and happy, and it was like, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> we made them wait until the afternoon to solve it, so we could get them a real run around. Yeah. So here's the board. Here's the hunt to once again beat dicks. <laughs> Over.